Good afternoon, Officer. Could you state and spell your name for the record? My name is uh, Officer uh, Andrew Cummings, A-N-D-R-E-L-L, -L, Cummings, C-U-M-M-I-N-G-S. Okay. And where are you employed currently? With Knoxville Police Department. How long have you been employed there? Uh, it was seven years last month. And what's your position at the Knoxville Police Department? Uh, right now I'm assigned to West, uh, West Alpha uh, Patrol. Okay. What does patrol do? Uh, patrol mainly answers calls for service. Um, we do answer uh, car wrecks, anything. Um, anytime somebody calls 911 and an officer is needed out, we would regular patrol would come out, and then we would um, deem if uh, anybody else needs to come out, uh, see any special teams, search and rescue, detectives, or anything like that. Okay. Prior to uh, being an officer of the Knoxville Police Department, um, where were you employed? I was employed with the uh, Rural Metro Fire Department for about 12 years. Can you walk me through some of the training you received? Um, to be a rural metro fire to fire? I don't know exactly how long our fire training was, but we say somewhere between five and six months. And then um, shortly after that, I got my uh, EMT IV license uh, through the state of Tennessee. Okay. So you are trained in, um, <coughs> excuse me, attending to people who have been injured? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, rural metro, um, they, uh, they took always tell everybody there's different type of calls, priority ones, priority twos, and priority threes. Uh, Rural Metro Fire, the services, Knox County, we took everything. So if you were having trouble breathing or somebody was seriously injured in a car wreck, we would, we would come. And then also if, um, lack of a better term, if, you know, uh, grandma or grandpa fell on the floor, then we would be there for a, for a lift assist. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Sir, can you speak up, please? Oh, I'm Can't sorry. I apologize. Oh, speak up. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I want to direct your attention to September the 14th, 2019. Did you have an occasion to respond to a 502 Balsam? Yes, sir, I did. And is that in Knox County? Uh, it's Knoxville, Knox County. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> tell me about that call. Um, again, at the time I was um, assigned uh, to routine patrol um, in the north uh, North Knoxville area. Um, we got a call of a, it was just special call of uh, shots fired into a residence. Um, I wasn't there, I wasn't really that far away. I would think it was, I was on um, Broadway just north of Cedar Avenue. Okay. Um, how long did it take you to get to that address? If I had to guess, I don't know off time, I'd, I'd probably say a minute to maybe two and a half minutes, maybe less. I'm when you really arrive sure. on on scene, describe the jury what what it was like. So I pulled up on scene. Um, I, I, I arrived very slowly to make sure again to see what I'm walking into. Again, shots fired. Didn't know if um, suspect was still on scene or anything like that. So arrived, um, pulled up slowly to the house tried to get a good survey of the scene, see if I saw anybody, any, uh, any suspects, any cars fleeing, somebody running, uh, or anything. Um, initially, what I saw was a, a young, um, young male, um, young child, I should say, at the uh, screen door of the home. And um, his hands were placed up against the glass, and he was just kind of smiling, looking at the lights. So, of course, I have my gun drawn, and um, I'm just trying to, you know, again, protect myself, protect anybody else, because, again, I don't know what I'm walking into. So I get to the door, and I remember walking to the door. A young man took off into the home, started crying, and um, I see um, a young lady sitting on the couch um, inside the home. Um, would you like me to describe the home from what yeah, I remember? Yeah, if, if you could. So you, when you open the door, it was, I'm going to call it maybe like a living room. I'll call it living room number one. Very wide open space, all couch, TV. And then as you walked in a little bit further, there was, I think I remember that, a arch uh, over um, walk, walk through area. And it kind of went to what I call living room number two. And in that living room number two is where I saw um, a young lady uh, who we found to be uh, my complainant or our complainant sitting.
I saw a lady who found later to be our complainant sitting on the couch and um, later uh, noticed that it seemed that she was on her phone um, or had a phone up to her ear. And um, I walked in. I think I maybe just kind of cracked the door and I said, did you call 911? And she was like, yeah, kind of waved me in. Um, and I kind of walked in. I go, is anybody hurt? And she just kind of points to uh, behind her. And that's when I saw So when I saw a foot um, of a young child just over the armrest of the couch. And at that point, I just holstered up, grabbed her, and ran outside. And as I'm walking outside, I am assessing her for injuries. I noticed a defect to her hand. I can't remember if I saw a defect to her arm or I say a better better choice of words is a hand wound or an arm wound. I know I saw a hand wound and I can't remember if she had on a dress or a shirt but I remember looking up under her shirt or whatever she had on and I saw a a, uh, a chest wound. So at that time, I immediately got on the radio and told them and said, hey, we have a victim, and you just you know, go ahead and send everybody in. Um, with that type of a call, um, KFD, or Knoxville Fire Department, is automatically dispatched along with uh, EMS, or AMR, Rural Metro. I don't know. I went to the back of my car and just kind of again assessed her again checked her all over so I could give a good report to the um, EMS crew that was, EMS and fire crew that was arriving well, maybe we have the screen <coughs> and officer Cummings do you recognize that per that picture right there I do, sir. Can you tell the jury what that is? That would be the, uh, I don't know the correct address, but that would be the the, uh, the house that I responded to that night. Okay. And do you recognize this? Um, from that angle, it looks like it could be the couch that I saw our uh, complainant sitting on, um, but... Um, I'm not really too sure because I'd have to, I, I don't remember going that far into the house and seeing it, but I think that is the couch. Okay. Um, <laughs> tell us about Miss um, Howington's demeanor when you encountered her. One of the things, I, I, one of the things I will always, I always remember that sticks with me is just how quiet it was. I've I've run thousands of calls with Rural Metro as an EMT and as um, a police officer here with Knoxville. I've seen some things and I've done some things. And I've run calls where everyday people who just witnessed something who are hysterical, rightfully so, I understand. Um, but this particular scene or my, upon my arrival, it was just it was just very quiet. I didn't have anybody yelling. I didn't hear anybody screaming. I didn't have anybody, you know, trying to grab me and you know yank me in and point me out. Hey, this is what's going on. This is what's happened. This is what's hurt. It was just very very quiet. Sometimes we uh, 
we we joke and laugh and we say we always have a, a Richard Simmons on scene because there's always somebody doing you know the jumping jacks when you arrive somewhere. There was just nobody there. It was just it was just so quiet is what really um, got me. And I said Miss Town was just kind of sitting there on the phone. And I remember asking her. I said, Hey, do you need somebody? Is there somebody we can call for you? And she was like, No, they're on the phone. They're on the way. They're just a little bit lost. And I remember, Oh, do you want me to ask? Do you want me to give them direct direction? She was like, No, they'll be fine. And that was just kind of it was just a very calm demeanor. Tell me if you recognize that, that individual. I do. I Who do. is that individual? This is, um, this is a victim from that night. This is, I, I don't know her last name, but I know her name was uh, Destiny. But this, yeah. is, this is Destiny. And that's the girl you encountered that evening? Yes, sir. You know how he's marked in number four? That'd be marked and filed as number four. After you leave the house with, with Destiny, what do you do? I went to the, um, like I said, I immediately got on a radio call for KFD and um, AMR, tell them that the scene was um, okay for them to enter. I put her on the back of my trunk, or, or the back of my car, back of my cruiser, and like I said, I'm just trying to assess her for injuries. Um, so, I, again, so I can give a good report. And also, I'm checking for. Her, um, Again, what's called ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. I did not, I did not feel a pulse. She was not breathing. Um, and yeah, so. This is hard testimony, but if he could, I'm, I'm losing the. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I apologize. Um, like I said, I assessed her again so I can give a good report to um, the uh, EMS personnel that was uh, arriving on scene. And like I said, I checked for um, ABCs, airway breathing, and circulation. She did not have a whole uh, a heartbeat, and she was not breathing at the time. I never touched it. I promise you, Your Honor, I never touched it. Oh, <laughs> there it is. There it is. Much better. Sorry about that. I did, I did, I did. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> so, um, once EMTs come and they, and they take um, Destiny, what do you do next? If I remember correctly, I um, kind of passed off some information to um, my supervisors and other officers who are remaining on scene, and uh, we decided to, we formulated a plan that we're going to go down um, uh, head, I think we've been westbound on the road, and uh, to see if we could locate any type of uh, security camera security camera footage, would it be um, cameras on the home or any type of ring doorbell cameras? Were you able to uh, find any? We did locate. I, I remember. Uh, th I remember three. Um, two of the uh, residents said that their ring ring doorbell cameras weren't working but the next door neighbor's camera, uh, he had a security camera over his door that faced um, um, uh, the uh, residents. And did you, <coughs> excuse me, did you review that footage? We did. Um, he was able to pull that footage up and um, watching that footage we saw, um, and I'm gonna speak from the standpoint of as if the house is behind me. Um, looking at that footage and again, uh, 
the camera footage is coming. If the house is behind me, the f- camera is to the left of the residence. Um, so at one point we saw a car um, uh, pull in and basically park par- parallel to the road, almost, if you want to say, in the yard of that residence um, with its back towards the camera. And then another vehicle pulled in parallel to the road, almost facing um, uh, in front of the residence on the opposite side. So they're basically parked like this. Um, again, if I'm my back's to the house, the two cars are parked like this. This car came in first. This car came in second. And it looked as it looked as if two individuals and like two kids uh, went into the house. I'm not too sure how much time passes, but then you see an individual come out and get in vehicle number one and leave. I say a few seconds or so, I can't be sure of the exact time. Um, A few seconds or so after that, you see somebody come out of the house, hop into vehicle number two, move vehicle number two and put it in um, the spot where vehicle number one was parked. And then that person gets out of the car and goes back in the house. Sometime after that, again, I don't know exact time. Uh, I don't think it was that it was very long. Somebody comes out of the house, and you can see that they came to, which again, if the house is behind me. They come to the left side of the house, kind of like in the yard area, and then they go back in the house. And then sometime after that is when the 911 call was made. <clears throat> did you have an occasion to go look on the side of that house that night? We did. So a couple of us got together and decided to go uh, search um, that, um, again, we'll say the left side of that uh, the house in that yard. And um, there on that side, under a bush, we found a uh, firearm. Um, back in 2019, can you explain to me your setup in terms of whether or not you were having in cruiser cameras or body cameras or both? Um, I don't, I know at that time I had not been issued a, uh, I, I did not have a body cam. I don't know if we were transitioning, trying to get body cams or if we were trying them out or not. But at that time, all we had were, all I had was an in-car camera and what we call a belt mic. So you can hear what I'm saying, but you can't uh, see exactly what's going on or what I'm talking, or you can't see what's going on with me or, you know, who I'm talking to or anything like that, but you can hear me talk as long as I am, we say, in line with the, uh, with the, with the vehicle. Was your um, ink cruiser video system operating that evening? Yes, sir. Have you had an opportunity to review that footage? I have. Does it fairly and accurately reflect that evening? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Again, Justin, I'm contesting the authenticity of that video. All right, thank you. John, we'd um, like to move in to clips from the cruiser camera and publish this as a It is. It is, Your Honor. Um, is it Lisa five? Yes. Sir. Okay, number five. Officer Cummings, what are we looking at here? I believe you're, this is my in-car camera from um, that night. You're looking at, uh, I believe it's going to be Balsam Drive, and I'm facing what would be westbound.
say on that? Um, there, um, I believe we were trying to get a uh, sus suspect uh, vehicle description, and she told us it was a black Chrysler 300 dark tinted windows. Again, are we still sitting in front of 502 or Balsam right there? Yes, sir. And what does she say on that video? Um, there, I was uh, trying to ascertain how many shots that um, she have, may have heard um, that she night. She tells me she only heard one shot. And who is the female's voice we hear on that recording? That would be Miss, uh, um, she identified herself as Robin Howington that night, the mother of the victim. You see Robin Howington in the courtroom today? I do. Could you point her out and describe what she's wearing? She's sitting at the defense table, um, I'm going to say black jacket, pink top. All right, may the record reflect she's identified, or he's identified with her. Did you? <clears throat> Thank you. Good afternoon, Officer Cummings. Good afternoon, sir. You okay up there? I'm doing okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Uh, let me ask you this. Before arriving at that house uh, sometime around 8.56, I think, uh, on the 14th of September 2019 how much did you know about Robin Howington I think I had one prior interactions with her mm -hmm. I, th I think I do believe if I'm correct I believe it was one prior interaction and did you know that she was under doctor's care for PTSD no sir that was I, any, any, there was never an interaction I had with her that I would need to ask that information. Okay. <clears throat> you described that when you got there, she was very quiet. Correct. Would it surprise you to know that's something that folks who suffer from PTSD seek is the quiet? I would have to take your word for it. I'm not, I really, I really don't know, but. But. All you're saying is that you have, you said you made thousands of calls, right? Correct. And sometimes people are hysterical. Correct. And sometimes people are not. That is correct. And she fell in the spectrum of hysterical or not. Are you asking me which yeah. one she fell in? She fell into the spectrum of not. And, and that's in your experience not out of the ordinary to find that some people are not hysterical. Uh, is it out of the ordinary? Have I had people who are hysterical and people who are not hysterical? Absolutely. If you're asking what I think that is, I won't say common, it, for me, I would I would say it's more abnormal. Of course, you'd have to know something about that individual, wouldn't you? Like that she had PTSD. That might be I would. Difference. I guess so. Yeah, I I, I would say yeah. That would that probably add to it. Or give you more insight. And I, I think I could say I I would thank you on behalf of myself. And Miss Howington, I think you pulled a football out of your car and a stuffed animal and gave those to Gavin when you took him next door to, to the neighbor's house, right? I did. Okay. And when you were just talking with Mr. Ammons a moment ago, he asked you about what she said on that video. 
I think she's, they're just loading up Destiny the ambulance, and someone says to her, she's okay, let them do their, their job, right? I don't know what, I did hear somebody say, just let them do their job. I think he said that's what they're trained to do. Um, I have no clue if they're loading her up at that time or not. I, I can't really be sure. And what she said next was, what about him, Gavin? I heard her say, "What about him?" But I don't know. If, I, I, I don't know who she was referring to, whether it be Gavin or a suspect or anything. Well, the suspect wasn't there, right? What was he? I did not see a suspect at the time. No. Gavin was there. Gavin was there. That's correct. And let me ask you if I got this right. You were asked about the video. You're talking about the video from the house immediately to the right of Miss Howington's house, right? If you're looking at the house. If you're looking at the house, yes, it'd be the house to the right. Okay. The one, and, and you've seen that video? Yes, sir. With that stinking spider web that keeps bouncing around in front of the counter and the porch, right? Remember that? I don't remember a spider web. Okay. Um, you say that when... The, you see the car pull up and you see two adults and two children go into the house. I say it appeared to me like two adults and two children do go into the home, yes. Okay. If I tell you that's probably just a little wrong, would that surprise you? Yes, it would surprise you. Uh, it, would, it would surprise you that there were not two adults and two kids coming in out of the car I'd be very surprised by that and how often how many times have you watched that video since September 14th of 2019 I couldn't tell you when was the last time you looked at it I tell you exactly when. Not in preparation for trial, you didn't look at it. No, okay. that was. I would pretty much say that that night's pretty etched in my mind. Etched in your mind. Correct. But you, you would you would agree that it's possible for you to make mistakes, right? Anything's possible. Yes. Five years later, it'd be even easier to make a mistake about. It what you saw in a very short video on a dark night from a ring camera? I would say on a night to where I carry a lifeless five-year-old, it's, it's pretty hard to not remember a lot of things. Well, let me, ask, let me ask you this. I'm going to go back to when you first get there, you say you walk in and you're in a first living room. That's what I call it. And then there's another living room, another room with a couple of couches. The first one's got a couple of couches. I believe so, yes. <clears throat> and you walk back there and you see Miss Howington sitting with Destiny. Right? Correct. And... You see Destiny's condition and you pick her up and head out the door. That is correct. And you said you checked the ABCs and she had no heartbeat and no breathing. That is correct. And as another old uh, emergency medical guy, uh, can't stay alive if you got no heartbeat and no breathing, can you? That is correct. In fact, you're probably not alive if you got no heartbeat and no breathing. I believe they would consider you clinically dead. There was nothing else she could do for that for her daughter at that moment. Was there? <laughs> nothing you could do. Is it, are you asking me? Is there anything right. I could do, or right. what? Or well, well, let's say, let's break it down. Bad question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No problem. There's certainly nothing she could have done at that point with a child with no heartbeat and no breathing. I'm going to respectfully disagree. What would you have had her do with that child with no heartbeat and no breathing? Um, at least CPR. Do you know if she ever had any training in CPR? I have no idea. 
Do you know you do? You had lots of training in CPR, right? I have, yes, sir. I have too. You can hurt somebody with CPR, can't you? If you don't know what you're doing. This is true, yes, sir. And if you don't do it right, it's pretty meaningless. This this is true, correct? So, what did you do to save Destiny's life that night? Like I said, I assessed her for injuries. Um, make sure that I could give a clear and accurate report to what I to what I saw and what I observed. And like I said, the time it took me to observe her and um, check her for injuries, um, I, you know, EMS was already on scene, and I passed her off. You didn't do any CPR on her either? No, sir, because again, like I said, at the time, I wasn't... By the time I realized that she was lifeless... EMS was already on scene, and I passed her off. And, and at that point, how long do you think you'd been on the scene? I don't know. I couldn't tell you an exact time. A couple of minutes. Again, I couldn't. I couldn't give you an exact time. And you arrived a couple of minutes after she made the nine one one call. Um, a, you said a minute to two and a half. I believe so. Yes, sir. And you're you were a trained EMT. Correct. No, you don't. You don't think she was, do you? I have no idea. I never asked. Um, if I tell you she's not, would that surprise you? No, I'm not. <coughs> Sorry, no, I don't. No, again, like I said, that was <coughs> any interaction I ever had with with Miss Hallington. It was that was never something I needed to ask her. And there's, <coughs> it's not like everybody you run into is a trained DMT either. That is true. Right. Thank you, officer. No further questions. Any further? Yes, sir. No, you may step down, officer Cummings. Thank you. Who is your next witness? Thank you, Officer Preston Tucker.